Thanks to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. With iPad OS 15, we're taking this versatility further, making iPad even more capable and more intuitive. And we started right on the home screen with widgets. Cool. The WWDC keynote just ended, and I think a lot of us were hoping for new MacBook Pros, new AirPods, something to do with new hardware. What we got was a lot of software. We got iOS 15, we got iPad OS 15, we got Watch OS 8, and a bunch of software bits in between. And even though there wasn't that flagship, one more thing, like kind of awesome hardware that I think a lot of folks were hoping for, it's not to say what we got wasn't exciting. And I think the most interesting update was actually the newest version of Mac OS called Monterey. So let's start there. So for me, the highlight feature of Mac OS Monterey coming later this year is something called universal control. Essentially, it's going to let you use a single mouse and keyboard between Mac and iPad. So they set it up pretty cool. If you've got an iPad next to like your MacBook Pro, for example, you can just take your mouse from the trackpad and without any other setup, you can just drag it over to where your iPad is, almost like you would if it had a secondary display. And your iPad will automatically recognize that and give you the option to use the trackpad from your MacBook Pro. Same thing with the keyboard. It also works from Mac to Mac as well. If you have a lot of Macs and you've got a MacBook Pro and you've got an iMac, you can drag the mouse the other way, for example, and use that trackpad for your iMac. A very cool feature to actually see, kind of takes that sidecar idea and kind of steps it up a few notches, uh, but a very awesome thing if you don't want to buy or you don't have sort of an external mouse and keyboard for the iPad. So this next one, AirPlay to Mac is something that makes a ton of sense. I was kind of surprised it wasn't there for a while, but it's like you can AirPlay from really any device to an Apple TV. Now you can AirPlay from whatever you want, whatever iDevice you're on to your Mac, which makes a lot of sense. You can share your iPhone display, you can AirPlay movies, videos, pictures, whatever you want, but now you can use the display on your Mac. Uh, other highlights, for example, shortcuts for Mac uh, are coming. Uh, a bunch of updates for Safari as well, but sort of those are the key things I'm most excited about at least for Mac OS Monterey. And of course it wouldn't be a WWDC without showing the latest version of iOS that should make its debut in September when ultimately we get the next iPhone. Uh, so they started off with a lot on FaceTime. It's, there weren't any sort of killer amazing features. These are sort of small tweaks. Uh, but FaceTime will make the calls look more natural. Spatial audio in calls will be voice isolation. So if there's a lot of things going on in the background, people should be able to hear your voice. A new grid view for video. Uh, portrait mode in video, which was interesting. The first time that we've sort of seen that in a FaceTime call. I think a precursor to saying portrait video make its way to the next iPhone. You can now send links to FaceTime calls and you can actually do that via the web. So somebody on a PC, for example, could join a FaceTime call. That was pretty awesome. Uh, but I think one of the most interesting features and for those of us that do IT support for our friends and family, you can now share your screen. There's a new suite of features they're calling SharePlay, but the big one there is a screen share where you can share your screen with whoever you want. Um, you can also watch video together, listen to music together, and uh, that kind of thing uh, in there as well. Inside of Messages as well got a slight overhaul. Uh, if you've ever sent a lot of pictures, for example, they're all kind of in line. Now they're all gonna stack. So you can actually swipe through them. So iOS 15 is getting something called Notification Summary. Essentially, it's going to deliver all of your notifications kind of condensed. And there are a few exceptions. You can customize it quite a bit. So if you have notifications from a person, for example, that won't go into the summary because you might want to reply to them earlier. But if you get a bunch of apps from like Apple News, for example, or things that maybe don't need attention right away, right away, they will group into this notification type of, of summary and they'll order by priority. Also in messages, there's a now in do not disturb. So instead of just like I'm driving, you could set it for like I'm at work and so people can know not to bother you. And so speaking of that, not to bother you. Uh, there's a new feature called Focus that'll be built in to iOS 15. They spent a lot of part of the keynote talking about this. So essentially it'll choose what you want to focus on a particular time and learn what you do during those tasks. So for example, you can dedicate a home screen for entertainment, work, 
or just chill at home, it'll mute notifications and sort of let you see apps that maybe are focused on that particular time frame. So if I've got a work one, for example, I can see Telegram and Slack, maybe my news will be muted. If I'm at home and I've got kind of relaxing mode, maybe Netflix will show and all my sort of work notifications will be muted until I decide to exit um, out of that. All right, so this is a sponsor that I've been really looking forward to doing, Meet Bright Sellers. It is a customized wine subscription service, and it is as awesome as it sounds. So I'm not like an expert wine drinker, I just know what I like. Generally, it's of the red variety. Uh, Bright Sellers makes it really easy. You take a 30 second quiz online, and they send you your first bottles, and then you have to drink those, and then you give feedback, and you get bottles that match your feedback, and it keeps getting better as you go. Like a music subscription service, you know, when you start rating songs. If you end up not liking a bottle, they'll replace it for you with something hopefully more to your liking with the next shipment. It's amazing as it sounds, the bottles show up at your door, and generally, they are always uh, delicious. And I think at this point, you already know if Bright Cellars is for you. I was a very strong, yes, it is for me. Uh, it's also not crazy expensive either. We have a link down below, there's a promotion. You get 60% off your first four bottles and you can get started, try the wine, enjoy the wine, rate the wine, be happy with the wine. And obviously caveat, you need to be 21 years or older. So I'm sorry if you're younger, you gotta wait. So photos got a bit of an update, but via the camera. Uh, so if you take your camera, you hold it up to some text, it'll now be able to detect that text and also let you sort of work with it, edit it, copy it. It'll pull out phone numbers. Uh, you can also just select all of that text and send it to yourself, send it to somebody else. Nothing we haven't, nothing we haven't seen before from Google, but it's nice to see it baked in uh, to iOS. Also gonna work with other sort of things like pets. If you hold it at a picture of a dog, for example, uh, it'll tell you what its breed is, so you landmarks and that kind of thing. A spotlight got some updates as well. So photo search, so you can search for like San Francisco or dates, it'll pull out information for you. Also you'll get rich results for contacts. So if you search for John Rettinger, if I'm in your contacts, it'll pull up all of my information. It'll work with actors and movies. It'll also pull out information and giving spotlight, I think a little bit more feature complete. So this is kind of interesting, changes coming to Apple Wallet. I think I was expecting Apple to offer a crypto wallet. There've been rumors that was coming. We got though, I think is equally interesting. So Apple is really trying to make their vision of your wallet on your phone be able to take the place of your everyday wallet. So the big thing in states where it's imported, be able to scan your driver's license uh, and actually input all of that information and encrypt it on your phone. So that way you can use it while you're traveling or if you get pulled over, for example. Um, also being able to use now the ultra wideband chip to unlock hotel rooms, more uses for cars. So you don't have to take it out of your pocket. It'll just know when you get close. It's making the, the wallet app again, closer to not ever having to carry a physical wallet. Weather got an update too. Essentially, they just took what they did from Dark Sky and put it into the weather app, which no surprise, but nice to see. It's gonna change based on condition, new graphics for stats and all that kind of stuff. Uh, maps got an update, sort of making it more interactive, uh, show you elevation, road labels and colors, new night mode, better graphics for navigation, all that kind of stuff will be coming later on this year. All right, so uh, iOS wasn't the only thing that got updated as I insinuated at the beginning of this video. iPad OS 15 came and the big feature uh, was widgets that you can now place anywhere like you could on your iPhone. That's essentially it. It's nice and it's there. Um, they are a larger format that'll work with iPad, so that's nice. Other kind of iPhone features, there's an app library now built in, you can access it from the dock. You can also now hide pages if you want. But one of the coolest things is new multitasking. So there's a new menu on top, and it'll give you things like full screen and split view, quick access to other apps, swipe down to choose another app, open app centered on the screen, and a new minimizing, it's kind of a window uh, called the shelf. But kind of like what you do with the, the dock in Mac OS, you can kind of minimize things. You can see all of your apps that are minimized and then call them back up. Other cool things you can do, you can create split view and a new app switcher. There are changes to the keyboards, notes, and things like that, but smaller features, nothing, I don't think anything giant or sort of flagship uh, in iPad OS 15 like we were expecting, but certainly a small improvement to iPad OS 14. Uh, what we didn't get, I think, is a big story here. Uh, we didn't really get pro apps. I think a lot of people were expecting. There's an update to Swift though, where you can create iPhone and iPad apps now directly on your iPad. So that was cool. Um, but nothing to really take advantage of that new M1 chip. Like I think a lot of people were hoping for, like Final Cut Pro making its way to the iPad. I guess that goes to show you, 
never buy hardware based on future software because you never know uh, what's going to come. Uh, another kind of the last new feature was Quick Notes. You can kind of swipe up from the corner and new notes gonna appear. If you have the Apple Pencil, you can jot it down or type something really quickly. There were other things that got updated and not gonna spend too much time talking about it, but updates to iCloud. Uh, Apple kind of getting into VPN uh, on the name of privacy. Some updates to health. And of course we saw updates to watchOS, now watchOS 8, which brings things like new portrait watch faces, uh, improvements to health, nothing giant there. There's no new customizable watch faces or a watch face store. It's just small step improvements like we saw to the iPhone, the iPad, also on the watch. So that, that's it, huge software changes, nothing on the hardware side. I'm curious if you guys are excited, disappointed, how you guys fall on it. I think the improvements to privacy are really nice. Being able to use sort of the trackpad from a laptop on your iPad is awesome. And sort of making things slowly better are always nice, but nothing giant this year. And Apple maybe is held to a higher standard when it comes to their keynotes. You always expect these awesome things and we didn't get them. So we still have a lot to look forward to, I guess, this year, like new MacBook Pros, new Mac Mini, maybe a Mac Pro and maybe an iMac Pro. Perhaps we'll see all those show up in the future at a dedicated hardware event. But this year, that was not WWDC.